you're here at the Maine State Museum with us, although remotely, and so we have a live audience as well from um, the Rangeley Lakes Middle School. Our, we want to thank you from South School in Rockland for joining us today. We're here in the Malaga Island Fragmented Lives exhibit, and we're going to take some time to get to know the islanders and who they were, what they did, how they lived, um, and just explore their experience in um, what happened throughout their lives and also towards the end of the island's inhabitants um, in, in, um, 19, in the early 1900s and how they were evicted from the island. So guys, we're going to be doing this in a very unique way. Of course, the unique part is that we get to see you guys and you get to see us live, which is pretty cool. And we're also going to be having a performance right here in the exhibit. So I hope that you enjoy the performance, that you learn a lot, and that you also get um, a, a lot of motivated um, to think a little bit more about this story. And now I think I'm going to pass the baton and uh, introduce Tom Nash, who's the director of the Marty Stevens Interactive Improvisational Theater, who has been collaborating with us Welcome. on this project. Um, what you're going to experience is four different scenarios of a little snapshot of life on the island. What we do is we act out the scenario, we stop it when someone delivers a line that's really, really important. And then what we do as actors, we do what's called staying in character. And then you there and the students here can ask us questions. Um, I start a scenario and end it with a click. So hopefully it won't make you jump. Um, and I'll be doing some of the facilitation of the questions, and another one of our colleagues will do it as well, uh, and I'll also be doing some acting. We're going to make sure we focus on the, the issues that they're dealing with, that the residents, both the adults and the kids, are dealing with, both the residents of Malaga Island as well as the residents of Phippsburg. Okay? Having said that, we're going to get started. You ready to go out there? Yes. Yes! Okay, good. There you go. Good. Okay, we're going to start with the first scenario. The first scenario is called, Let's Just Get Rid of Those Malagites. And it takes place in the home of a wealthy man of Phippsburg and his wife. And um, the, he is a selectman. And several other of the selectmen have come to visit. So we are going to meet Thomas Fuller and Robert Jones and Stephen Chamberlain, and we're also going to meet Mrs. Jones in Just Get Rid of Those Malagites. Gentlemen, mm. something has to change. We have to get those people, those mixed breed coloreds, off that island. Just calm down a little bit. We have the Pays report right here, and it's got recommendations about how to go about doing it. No, no, no. Well, what about all the, the, the missionaries coming up from from south from Portland? Uh, they've been doing an awful good job with them. They're not enough. It's uh, it's an eyesore out there, and according to George Pays here, they don't even own that island. There's there's no deed. How do they think that they could own property? What is that all about? Well, uh, I guess they just moved on to the island and nobody said anything, but they, they can't prove it. Gentlemen, they've got a school there now. Isn't that yeah. some sort of permanence? Yeah. Would you like some yeah, coffee? And Robert, I can't help but overhear, I, you know, these, these people on Malaga Island, they've been our neighbors for 40 years. Do you really think it's right that we tell them they need to leave now? Uh, uh, Susan, I think we'll take that coffee now, you know? Uh, I think the men have this covered. Okay, so thank you. Yes, wonderful. thank you very much. Yes. <clears throat> a number of the of the Malagites could go to the home for the feeble-minded. They should all go there. I, really, it well, just puts a bad light on our our town. I'm sorry. You know what? Really, we really just need to get rid of those Malagites. Characters here. If you would join us, Mrs. Jones. Does anybody we have any have. questions for these people? Yes? Over uh, here? Is there a particular reason that was addressed that you want to get rid of the Malagites? 
particular reason for getting rid of them? You seem to have a lot of different reasons. Well, we set for this report because the economy here is going down. And we're hoping to bring tourists into the area. And just 300 yards across is this ugly town with colored people, half-breeds. And it really doesn't make sense. Tourists don't want to see that. That's right. The New Meadows Inn just opened up. It's doing great. People from Boston are coming up, and they want to be on the coast of Maine. They don't want to see that. So there you go. Any other questions? In the remote side, we have a question back here. I have a question for Mrs. Jones. Um, it seems that the Malagites are marginalized um, and pushed to the fringes, and it seems like you, as a woman, were also pushed out of the conversation. <clears throat> How do you feel in your dynamic in your household? Do you have a voice? Are you allowed to speak your opinion? Oh, well, it's generally not the practice for women to speak up and have a voice in, say, board meetings and on committees and things like that. But, but in the home, we do have a place, <clears throat> and we do have opinions, and we can speak to our husbands in the home when we see fit. As long as it stays in the home. Exactly. Right, Mrs. Jones? This was a, like a mini board meeting, and she, she really had no business you know, in there giving her opinion. We'll talk about this. Are we set? Thank you. So just get rid of those Malagites. And we are going to meet an early photographic session. Uh, we have George and Mary Blaine, who are missionaries. And they are here to take photographs of the residents so as to raise funds. We will meet the photographer, Herman Bryant. Bryant. And we will meet Malaga Island residents, James and Rosella Eason, and their son Ethan. And Moses and Kate McKenna, McKenny, and their daughter Mariah. And Susan Tripp. In Do We Have to Do This? You look great. We're so glad you came out today. We just want to get some pictures of you. For about a half an hour. We just need time for about a half an hour. Is that okay? We got chores to do. We got we got a lot of things to do here. We got fishing. We got a lot of things to do to keep the nets uh, mended. Uh, we got a lot of things to do. But we're here to help you. We're here to do God's work and to make sure that we can bring things that you need to this island. And that last session when I was here, that was very beneficial. Those pictures were oh, great. The, the, those postcards were wonderful. I, I remember that postcard. I didn't like that. I was embarrassed. What was the name of that postcard again? Oh, you're talking about the deuce or the trace of spades. Yeah. Oh, that that was that that just flew right off the shelf. Those you, people really like that. Do you realize that as a result of those postcards, we raised so much money we got we brought a school to your island. Yeah, money for who? For that, you, not for us. For you. It ultimately benefited you. You got a school. How much did you get all together? Oh, well, you know, we do have there's money that has to go to the mission. But, as, but on top of that, we are here to help you, to bring you supplies, medical supplies, heating supplies for the winter. Look at your shacks. I Look at that. I, I, somehow it doesn't feel like help for us. I mean, we may get some of it, but it really, I just, I'm un uncomfortable with what you're doing. I'm not happy with this. Maybe, maybe if we could get uh, this lady here and this gentleman here. That would what? be a great. You, I know. I think I, I this think is they, my wife. It's not his. That's not the truth. Why are you trying to gussy us up and mix us all up as if that's not the truth of who we are? We're proud people. We work hard. And well, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to get well, out I think of? What we're trying to do is, is, is let people know how terrible it is out here, how destitute you are, and to bring money to you. That's they, what we're doing. We're doing this for you. They, There's another scene that takes place on the island. This actually takes place at the Phippsburg Nazarene Churchyard in the summer of 1910. The townspeople are debating the merits of moving the Malaga Island residents off the island. We're going to meet some Phippsburg residents. In this scenario, it was entitled, Are you sure you want to help them? They have now been wards of the state for six years. When are they going to do something with them? 
Can't you think about anything except Malaga Island? That's what they're hoping to do is inherit that Earth, too. No. That island. Oh. oh, did you hear? I heard they're planning to force the Malaga Islanders oh. to move. Oh, that's horrible. No. no. <laughs> it might be better for them. Better? It might be. How could it be? <laughs> it's their... look, at the, look at the state they are living in. The little little ragamuffins running around with dirty th oh it's just a blight they're god's children they yes. deserve love as the good book says yes yes I, you know i heard they were planning to send some of them to that home for the feeble minus oh. like a jail it's horrible oh. have, have you ever dealt with some of them they, they might be a good person what i hear about our island home it's just not right it's not right what they're trying to do you know, I heard something about that in Tabasco, and I can't understand what this is all about. It's about money. That's what it's about. I'm not putting up with this. I'm not putting up with it. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. 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 Now, do you see, are you sure you want to help those people? So we have people from Malaga Island that are here. They were all at the church together. Yeah. Um, they came out of the church and overheard a conversation that some of the Phippsburg residents were having. So what kind of questions do we have of any of these adults or kids? Yes. Um, the children, how, how does the situation affect them? What do they think about it? Would you like to talk first? I'm not really sure what I think. I mean, we think mostly what our parents tell us to think. We and don't in, really get to choose our own opinions, I guess. In my household, I was brought up that the Malgites were nice people. And that's how I was brought up. We were told otherwise. Nothing wrong with Peter, is there? No. No. I just don't let him rub it, rub it off on my kids. That's, that's, you don't really? No. It's just not right. Oh, honey, them, those Color. children are just, they're not as good as you are. We just can't have that. I'll have a question from, from the remote site then. All right. Go ahead. Kaylee. Um, nice and loud. Matthew, why do you think so poorly of the other people? I mean, their home is their homes. It doesn't matter how it looks, does it? It's not really their home. They just sort of showed up there a couple hundred years ago. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> They've been uh, there on the island for about 40 uh, years, I think, right? You commented when you heard them speaking about you. Was that is that commonplace for you to speak up <clears throat> for yourself? And then what are usually the reactions of the community members when you do that? Well, we're independent folk. They don't like it when we speak up, but we live on our own. We work hard. We make a living from the sea. And uh, we do speak our mind as need be, but uh, we're not a very talkative folk because we work very hard. But when something needs to be said, we speak our truth and end the story. And are the repercussions, you asking, are the repercussions now because you spoke up, you think? Will something happen now, do you think, because of what you just said to them? There are those with money and influence, which is why this whole situation is occurring in the first place. Of course, people will speak up and, and speak, people will react, so to speak. And, uh, make life perhaps more difficult. Uh, just, uh, even where we can land our boats is dictated by others. What makes white parents better parents than black people? Black people are just the same as whites. The question was, what makes white parents better than black parents? Shall we start in on the eugenics again? I think this young man needs a lesson in eugenics. What is eugenics? Oh. We believe that they're all God's people. Yes. And and that's the way they should be treated, and you're wrong. Okay. Do you all know what eugenics is? People out there, you know what eugenics is as well? No. no? no. Someone want to someone wanna educate the rest of us what eugenics means? Why they keep on bringing this up? It's in all the newspapers. It's a study that has been made lately that shows that if you let people who are feeble-minded have children, those children will pass it on and on and on. So the best thing to do is to make sure they can't have children, and that just stops that line. Wow. Okay. 
go ahead. Oh, how do the pets, pets, for example, think that they're going to get away with it? Already gotten away with it. That's the problem. The governor of, of the state of Maine is my good friend, and he knows what to do with them. State of Maine has also had a part in this. They don't. They don't understand the Constitution of our United States at all. And it seems like they're not following the Bible. We're going to wrap this one up and move on to a couple other scenarios. This was entitled, Are You Sure You Want to Help Them? Okay.